a pleasant Sabbath day to all of you dearly beloved I would like to greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ today is another day to praise and worship God and so I would like to invite you to open your Bibles with me in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 25 I'm reading from the King James Version Bible but before I read I would like to offer this uh, moment to pray and plead with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ Father in heaven I thank you and I praise you that we could once again glorify your holy name and call upon you as our Savior thank you for your word bless your holy word today and as we wait for your imminent return may we be like your son Jesus Christ more and more as we behold him day by day father I pray for those who are worshiping with me today may you touch their hearts and heal their heal whatever they need to be healed today oh God and as the Spirit of God continues to work in each and every one of us may it be that this celebration of Sabbath be focused on how we can be closer and closer with you we long to see you Lord thank you so much for being so good and so faithful to all of us assuage our souls with your word today thank you for hearing and answering our prayers in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ amen amen once again I would like to thank you so much for uh, continually supporting this channel this uh, ministry as a volunteer for the Lord Jesus Christ all glory be to him and uh, the use of his God-given talent times and resources um, will be returned for his honor and for his glory so I would like to invite you friends today to open your Bibles with me in the book of Matthew chapter 25 and I would like to read from the King James Version Bible let us begin reading and I would like to begin in verse number one Holy Scripture says the words in red Jesus Christ says this then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom so in the ancient times or during the era when Christ Jesus ministered during his first coming the tradition of marriage was during the evening time and because of the of the uh, lack of uh, uh, resources which we have in our modern life they would use lamps and they would wait for the uh, for the bridegroom to come this has been the culture and this has been the tradition so this is the context in which Matthew 25 
is uh, being told or narrated by our Savior Jesus Christ and five of them were wise and five were foolish so this is an equal number so to speak verse number three they that were foolish took their lambs and took no oil with them so they were not prepared they were not uh, providing the uh, fuel to burn the lamp so to speak and that they have their uh, lamps but they don't have the fuel or the oil for their uh, so that it will continually provide them with uh, a fire or with light but the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps so it's a matter of preparation we can deduce some of the um, of the uh, items here with spiritual value and uh, we could say that the that the lamps could represent our body our soul if it was not filled with the holy spirit then we don't have the oil or the fuel to uh, to be guided by the word of god and also be able to uh, to continue as a christian in this journey and so this is the story that jesus is telling his disciples while the bridegroom tarried so the bridegroom delayeth his coming this is important because the bridegroom represents christ himself he is the bridegroom and the church is the bride so we who are christians who are waiting for his second coming are called adventist if you believe in the visible literal and the audible glorified second coming of Christ then you are considered Advent Adventist or waiting for the literal coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ so this is the case of the five foolish and the five wise virgins so let us continue so while the bridegroom tarried or delayed they all slumbered and slept so this again is an equal opportunity both wise christians virgins both full and also foolish christians virgins a value is uh, i'm just transporting the value to our present uh, life they are all sleeping meaning to say because of the delay they were tired and they were uh, they were trying to satisfy their desire for rest and that is uh, that is uh, uh, understandable that is not condemnable and that is what we call the urgings of the human flesh they all slept and they all slumbered meaning to say they they were tired of waiting and they begin to fall as and they fall asleep and at midnight the Jesus gave the precise time at midnight in the middle of the night in the middle where everyone had a deep sleep or everyone had the the uh, unprepared moments like you are uh, focusing on your you're focusing on your um, um, desire to uh, to satisfy your your body's natural natural um, uh, inclination to get 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 some sleep. So this was the situation, or this was the setting for for uh, uh, the ten or the five foolish. Uh, virgins and the five wise virgins so let us continue reading and at midnight there was a cry made behold the bridegroom cometh go ye out to meet him then all those virgins arose and trimmed their their lambs so they started to put fuel or put uh, or, or started to ignite their their lambs so to speak set at the fire so that the darkness will not envelop them 
And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, Be not let but the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you, but go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. It it gives us the understanding, it gives us the um, the uh, rational that sometimes we need to be able to say no when we are not able to give more than what we can uh, or if there is no extra if there is no if it is just enough for us it is also um, it is also understandable that people will ask if they don't have but it is also reasonable to say no when it is only enough for oneself so this is what happened not so lest there be not enough for us so they don't want to be walking in darkness so they said these oil or fuel is just enough for us to walk towards the meeting place and that we will not get lost along the way so they were advised the five foolish were advised to 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 rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves so they had to go somewhere that they can find um, they can find oil and that they can find the um, replacement to replenish their consumed oil verse number 10 and while and while they went to buy the bridegroom came and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage and the door was shut Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Seemingly harsh statements because of the, uh, of the uh, closure after everybody was able to come in to the, uh, to the uh, marriage uh, hall, a uh, marriage place. And so... The lesson of this story or this parable is very striking, very important. It's in verse 13. Watch therefore, for ye know not neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. So Jesus was very clear that we need to prepare so that we will not be enveloped by darkness and we will be able to see where we are going and we will be uh, guided towards the destination in this case the marriage marriage hall or the marriage place for the kingdom of heaven another parable was added is as a man traveling into a far country so this is the second or the follow-up of Christ uh, parable focusing on the on the preparation so that his people or his hearers will not be caught off guard for the kingdom of heaven is a man is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods verse number 15 and unto one he gave five talents to another two and to another one to every man according to his several ability and straightway took his journey then he that hath received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents meaning to say he invested the talents that the lord god had given him whether it is be money or it is be in this case it is it is obvious that it, this is money but in our application as a christian whether this could be our real talent our time our treasure our resources and whatever that is that god has given to us we need to invest it we need to use it because if we don't use it we will eventually lose it and likewise he had received two he also gained other two so the digression doesn't really 
mean a lot meaning to say that God could give to someone five or two or one it doesn't matter as long as it is invested or it is used that is the main uh, focus of this of this parable you need to use your God given talents you need to exercise due in diligence and industry in order for you to satisfy the one who gave you the talents or the one who gave you the time or the one who gave you the treasure in our case it's God God the Father who gave us all these resources in order for us to be able to to exercise our 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 God-given freedom to choose and our God-given abilities and capabilities to prepare ourselves and also prepare other people for his kingdom verse 18 but he that hath received one the Bible says went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money after a long time the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them mean to say the the owner of the money uh, came back after a long journey and reckoned or uh, calculated or uh, assessed or accounted what had been done with the investment that he commanded them to do and also what they had personally decided to do with their talents or the money in this case that was given to them and so the Bible says and so he that hath received five talents came and brought brought forth brought other five talents saying Lord thou deliverest unto me five talents behold I have gained beside them five talents more meaning to say you gave me this talent I used it and I have been able to reap five more talents verse 21 his Lord said unto him well down the good and faithful servant thou hast been faithful over a few things I will make thee ruler over many things and tear thou into the joy of the Lord mean to say that servant I used his uh, time, t talent, and treasure and resources to please the master who had given him such opportunity. Verse number 22. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. Meaning to say, uh, his industry and his, uh, and his willingness to... Uh, to work and to uh, reap uh, the uh, the amount of money that was uh, entrusted to him even though it's not five but it's only two he was able to deliver his Lord said unto him well done good and faithful servant thou hast been faithful over a few things I will make thee ruler over many things enter thou into the joy of the Lord of thy Lord then he which had received the one talent and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art a hard man, an hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown and gathering where thou hast not strawed. And I was afraid and went and heed thy, thy talent in the earth, Lord, there thou hast that is thine. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant thou knowest that I reap where I showed not and gather where I have not strode thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers and then at my coming I should have received mine own with usury meaning to say the owner was expecting for a return to his investment verse 28 continues take therefore the talent from him and gave it unto him which hath ten talents for unto everyone that hath shall be given and he shall have abundance but from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath and cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness 
there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So Jesus explained as a follow-up to the wise, to the ten virgins, the five full wise and the five foolish. As a follow-up to this, he he told them a story about a, a man who gave money to those servants of his, expecting that they will invest as he has commanded. But the the one who was given one, because the owner knew what the servants needed the most. He did not exercise due diligence. He did not exercise industry. He was slothful. In fact, the master, the owner said he was wicked, meaning to say he was not thinking of doing something with what he had been given, meaning to say he just squandered it. He just left it to rot on the earth or in the earth. So that's why he was judged. His talent was given to another who was productive. The point of the story is this in verse 31. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them from one another as a shepherd divided his sheep from the goats. So, as the as the story progressed another was another parable was added to this story to this uh, narrative i mean and this time this is about the uh, the division between the sheep and the goats the sheep are obviously meek and and uh, animals that follow their shepherd well the goats are a little bit loud but they don't really obey their uh, shepherd or their uh, uh, the ones the one that will lead them they they are so to speak uh, opposite of the meekly sheep so this is the follow-up of that story which Jesus Christ had built upon when he said that the five foolish and the five wise, it's about preparation. Uh, the other uh, parable about the talent, it's about, uh, uh, it's about performing for, for, for your master. It's performing what God has given you. I mean to say, your, the assets that was trust, entrusted to you, you must perform, those assets must be must be wisely invested to, to be able to perform according to the owner or the master's expectation. And this is the follow-up. It's about the division between, it, it's a follow-up between the, the sheep and the goats, those who are righteous and those who are wicked, obviously. And verse number 32, let me, uh, let me continue reading. He shall separate them one from another as a shepherd divided his sheep from the goats. Obviously, Jesus is the, the real, the true shepherd. Then shall the kings, and he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye, blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom of the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. These, the next few verses, these are the revelation of Christ about what it is to have true religion, true faith in Him. This is the practical, practical application of the true religion. And so, this is the, this is the um, statement from the Lord Jesus Christ Himself. For I was hungered, and you gave me meat. I was thirsty, you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when, so, when saw we the unhungered? And feed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink. Meaning to say, they were not, they were not aware that Jesus was hungry. Jesus was needing water to drink, or he was naked. And Jesus, um, Jesus continued this uh, narrative. When we saw, when 
when saw we thee a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee? Or when we saw thee sick, or in prison, and come unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Praise God. Then shall he say unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and for his and his angels. For I was unhungered, and ye gave me no meat or food. I was thirsty, and ye gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me not in, naked, and ye clothed me not, sick, and in person, and ye visited me not. Then shall they also answered him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee unhungered, or thirst, a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as ye did it not to one of the least of these, ye did, not, ye did it not unto me. And this shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous unto eternal life so meaning to say jesus christ was revealing to them the nature of the true religion that once we once we have done this acts of compassion out of our love for the lord we have especially to those who needed them we have done it to the lord himself we are we are invited to join the Lord Jesus Christ in this moment when he is when he is revealing to us the nature of his kingdom the compassion the grace and also the the preparation for those who have been righteous and the preparation for those who have been wicked the wicked will be assigned in the everlasting fire while the righteous will be assigned in the everlasting home that the Lord Jesus Christ had prepared for those whom he had chosen and those whom who had loved him and had uh, um, have done the preparation and they have able to uh, perform uh, the task that was given to them by the Lord Jesus Christ and also they were able to perfect their religion by showing by applying it to the least of those people who needed help those who are hungry thirsty naked those who are desperate and destitute in their lives so that is the true religion that jesus christ had revealed to his disciples inasmuch as we have done this to the least of those of our brethren we have done it and to the lord jesus christ so today as the sabbath is um, is uh, observed in our in this part of the world and in other parts of the world it is being uh, observed and almost to be um, to be um, finished the good news is that all of us who are called by the Lord Jesus Christ will have the opportunity today to be able to make the decision either we will be wise or we will be foolish or we should be prepared or not do we need to to um, to uh, uh, gather oil so to speak or allow the Holy Spirit to guide us so that we will not be enveloped or we will not be overcome by darkness the preparation now is about being guided by the Spirit of God through the Holy Word of the Holy Scriptures the Bible the second parable that 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 gives us this this uh, uh, thought today we need to invest the God-given abilities and capabilities he has entrusted to us perform upon 
the gifts that the Lord has given you and me. Meaning to say, God, who is the owner of life, the owner of time, talents, and treasure, is expecting from us that we will be able to perform according to His commands. So preparation, performance in our assigned duty as followers of Jesus Christ. The last parable is about the division of the sheep and the goat. Uh, those who have been, um, those who have been compassionate in their earthly life, those who have given much, those who have done this uh, good deeds according to the commands of the Lord, they are able to perfect the love of the Father through Jesus Christ in their own lives. So preparation is needed now because the end is about to, to happen. Next is performance of our duty as uh, commandment keepers and as watchers of righteousness. And then perfecting uh, the love of God the Father through Jesus Christ His Son in our own lives with by the power of the holy ghost so three important things that had developed as we read through the parables i may have missed some of the some of the verses here but i would like you to read matthew 25 the lord jesus christ is indeed the bridegroom he will come again he is the bridegroom we the church is the bride we need to be ready for the bridegroom he is coming that is the first important point of matthew 25 the second is god is the owner of everything he is the master of everything and we as his servants he's expecting us to invest and 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 double our our gifts that he has given us I mean to say if if god assigned us to to have the gift of, of speaking, uh, we must use the gift of speaking, singing, the gift of healing, the gift of teaching, the gift of, of preaching, the gifts of being a support uh, to, to, the, to the church. Use them so that the church will be, will be filled and the church will be doubly blessed. So that is the second point of the story. And the third is that we need to understand that the practicality of our religion can be can be seen can be heard and can be felt especially by those who are in dire need of compassion like food water um, clothing food water clothing and personal visits personal appearance personal care to those that are destitute and so today friends may the lord continue to bless you and keep you the lord continue to provide the holy spirit as you as you wait for him he is coming soon and he will require re reckon uh, his reward according to our performance according to our works shall be and then he will divide between the righteous and the wicked the righteous will be on eternal uh, eternal peace with him and the wicked will be eternal damned and so the good lord continue to bless you this sabbath and continue to keep you safe may he protect you may he prepare you may he provide for you may he preserve you until that day and may you have peace as you pray and plead for His presence in your life and in my life. May God continue to bless you and keep you. So happy, happy Sabbath day to all of you. May God be with you all.